uh, welcome to you all uh, for coming and uh, like uh, uh, setting your uh, time schedule to this event. For those who are uh, who are joining us uh, for the first time, uh, AI Radio Meetups is a series of meetups uh, that uh, is focused on AI in general. Basically, the goal of these sessions or meetups is to uh, like present uh, current development and uh, current trends within AI and within implementation of AI in Slovakia. Uh, it is organized, uh, originally the idea uh, uh, was created at uh, 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 Technical University of Košice. Uh, uh, later on, it uh, developed or become activity of the AI Slovakia itself, uh, which is national uh, platform uh, for AI development in Slovakia. We also use the name or the official name is Center for Artificial Intelligence. So this is one of basically our activities and we try to connect with a uh, general public and uh, to basically uh, uh, communicate the uh, these uh, these issues, these trends. So today's topic uh, will be explainable AI. Uh, let me share the screen first. I prepare slides. Okay, so this is not the first time that I'm giving this talk. I presented uh, this topic uh, also last year. It was at CodeCon uh, 2023, uh, which is uh, the biggest uh, uh, conference uh, focus on AI also, but uh, mostly development in general. So it's uh, uh, the main event of the year, like 1,000 people uh, on one place at one time and uh, the best programmers basically uh, within Slovakia in one place in one time. So this is like updated version of that talk that where I presented also activities of AI Slovakia and so on. So uh, during the uh, talk or during uh, my, uh, my talk today, uh, you are also able to like uh, ask questions. Uh, the Zoom itself uh, doesn't have uh, uh, so developed this option, so I decided to use Slido instead. So those of you who are familiar with that, uh, I probably don't have to explain just to use the hashtag AI Slovakia. But for those who are like never used it, uh, this is basically one of the platforms how to collect uh, like uh, inputs, whether it's questions or some interactions. I inputted into the slides also the interactivity. So I will ask you a few questions also to you and so on and so on during uh, the talk. So feel free to use it. It's whatever like uh, uh, like uh, you have a platform, whether it's mobile, tablet, uh, or whatever, like uh, internet, uh, internet uh, browser you have, just open slido.com and enter AI Slovakia and you will be there. Okay, so this is basically the structure of uh, today's talk. So at the beginning, I will cover the topics as for current development, the trends, current uh, uh, new technologies that are within AI, the most developed and most popular. Uh, then I will like continue, it will be about 15 minutes. Uh, later, I will continue as for the future trends or the path towards uh, something called uh, strong AI or AGI, human level AI, and so on. Uh, after that, uh, uh, I will cover also ethics and uh, transparency. Uh, what are the approaches uh, on uh, what level is, for example, approach of European Union, which is also approach uh, of Slovakia. Uh, what are the points different, for example, from US or China and so on and so on. And also cover the current uh, research as for neuroscience and AI. As I will explain later, it is connected even from the beginning of uh, AI as uh, uh, AI itself. Then uh, I will like uh, the four point will be about 20 minutes. Uh, uh, will we cover the core of the talk, which is explainable AI. 
this is uh, uh, one of the uh, like attitudes towards uh, explainability. Uh, I will cover the one that is uh, from basically math, uh, like calculation of Shapley values and how to basically compare models and how to explain how they behave, how they decide, which is also a part of my uh, PhD study. And uh, the conclusion will be basically uh, where, how it, uh, what are the options, how to like uh, uh, use this knowledge or use these attitudes, uh, this different approach to AI, and uh, what's the position of Slovakia regarding this. So after that, uh, you will have about like 15 or 20 minutes to cover all of your questions that we will collect via Slido. And uh, that's basically it. So expect about uh, one and a half hour of uh, hopefully interesting topics for you. So first we will start by definition. What I will uh, cover is uh, basically not just AI, but also data science itself. Uh, by definition, what is uh, basically data science? It's uh, a uh, collection of scientific results. AI is uh, also another area of science that is uh, uh, like um, covered or used within like data science. So AI is part of that. And we basically try to describe these uh, models or these uh, uh, systems, uh, how they operate, how we can model them and how to basically transform the raw data to like meaningful information that is useful for us and we can uh, at the end collect knowledge hopefully wisdom and based on the wisdom we can better decide in like praxis in day-to-day -day lives uh, ai uh, is also part of the like scientific approach there is theory there is also uh, like um, application in a business and so on and so on so uh, basically, the scientific method is applied on the research within like computer science and AI by definition is something that imitate uh, uh, our real intelligence or uh, the intelligence of people. And at the beginning, it was in uh, 40s, uh, like um, about uh, 100 or not, not 100, but uh, nearly 100 uh, uh, like uh, years ago, it began this journey. And uh, at the beginning, it was inspired basically by human brain. Later, it became something else or the, uh, the, uh, the development led to different approaches, but uh, we will cover that later. So basically AI or the artificial intelligence imitates the real one and try to uh, basically uh, try to imitate uh, also the decision-making, uh, how it's done by our brains. An application is, for example, visual perception, uh, robotics within like companies or within industry, speech recognition. You probably already have some experience with that. Each mobile device that you are using has this uh, ability now. Uh, decision making, so far it's up to us, but there are a lot of like automated systems for decision making. Translation, you probably already have some experience with that uh, as for Google Translate and other services. So that's the definition. Uh, I will, as I already mentioned to you, uh, uh, I will collect uh, during, the, during the talk also information uh, from you. So uh, this is the first time that you can use basically the Slido uh, Slido uh, for interaction. So what I'm interested in uh, is basically which programming language you have some experience or basically uh, how you use uh, uh, AI or uh, in which programming language you program. Uh, some application within AI. You don't have to, you are not forced to participate, but uh, whoever wants uh, is welcome to, to like share. 
and these kind of like uh, interactions will be also later during the talk so Scala is good option. Python is current leader, so I expected this kind of TypeScript. Okay. <laughs> okay. C C sharp. Okay. Okay, so far just just this. So as we see, Python is dominant, and we can move on. Uh, okay, so uh, a short introduction as for me. Uh, my original profession is um, uh, economist. Uh, I studied finance originally or macroeconomics. Uh, later, I switched to basically data science as a consultant. But uh, currently, I'm also an uh, AI researcher. Uh, it's in uh, at the university. I also teach or mentor students, uh, which is at Technical University Košice under Professor uh, Peter Sinchak, who is also uh, the former uh, uh, head of a scientific board at uh, AI Slovakia, uh, where I also work as a uh, uh, evangelist or AI in data science evangelist and I have also my own like uh, research institute which is called Get Data Institute uh, where we cover basically consulting for public private sector and so on. Uh, uh, we were Get Data and uh, me myself I was at the beginning of the first efforts to create something like uh, AI Slovakia so basically national platform or organization that will uh, connect all the main players within the AI industry. Uh, it was uh, early at the, under the name Slovak AI. Uh, later, it uh, changed, transformed. Currently, it's AI Slovakia. Uh, we are also a uh, member of uh, European AI Alliance, Claire, Taylor, and so on and so on, Alice, uh, AI for Risk, and there are many like organizations that uh, connect also within Europe, also within Slovakia, the AI people or people interested in AI and who has deep knowledge in AI. Uh, I also teach data science uh, as an instructor. Uh, one of the uh, like brands that you probably know is DataCamp, which is uh, the leader, like global leader, the most successful startup of uh, basically in the world as for uh, uh, teaching AI and data science. Uh, then I also teach uh, Basecamp AI and uh, formerly it was under the name Learn to Code, currently it's called uh, Skillmia. I also teach there also via Robim, uh, IT. we do IT. Uh, this is uh, one of the platforms that uh, I had like workshops uh, with this focus and also within Get Data, I basically teach this kind of also companies and like um, individuals. Uh, we also, uh, I'm also founder of iData Slovakia, which is a part of the global network of uh, iData meetups. I will later uh, go uh, deeper into that, but it's basically also connects try to connect academia with business and basically transfer the knowledge from academia to business and other uh, uh, like uh, opposite ways. So, so from business to academia and uh, this is a global initiative. Uh, also our Slovakia, Julia users group and uh, Tableau users group, uh, there we cover uh, also Slovakia and Czechia. Uh, after the school or after the like economic study, I started uh, working in basically public sector. I was uh, advisor also uh, to our prime minister, Iveta Radičová and uh, Lucia Žitňanska, uh, uh, who was um, uh, the vice uh, prime minister 
at that time. And the main like uh, reform uh, of this government was basically the reform of justice system. So uh, together with my colleague, Martin Valentovich uh, from uh, Mesa 10, we were one of the like first people who implemented AI or uh, use AI in uh, basically optimization within uh, the network of uh, uh, like uh, judges and uh, within uh, like judicial systems. So uh, based on basically our uh, approach, which is which was based, we basically um, uh, like uh, calculated vectors as for uh, the map of Slovakia to basically lead to the system that will be optimal as for a reachability for everybody to like get justice done. And uh, some of the like uh, part of the uh, judicial system should be we like uh, uh, optimize it and decided which one should be like reduced or so on and so on, all based on data. So uh, uh, this was one of the activities I like work on many uh, ministries. This is just the main activity. This was main reform. Uh, uh, later, when basically the government fell, uh, it was on my <laughs> my uh, birthday. So that's one of the reasons why I don't celebrate like each year. And... Uh, like different people uh, come to power. So uh, basically as the saying is, uh, whoever like creates a house, uh, house is the ladder and uh, they use the ladder to go up. Okay, so later I came to the like business uh, sector and uh, these like books uh, that are around, uh, I basically, uh, become uh, like technical reviewer or help to bring them uh, to the world, uh, help to improve them. Uh, and it was within like publishing, uh, mainly packed uh, uh, publishing, but also A-Press and uh, uh, some of the corporations also with O'Reilly. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's it. And as for short introduction, now I always uh, try to like uh, combine also input from you. So I would like to also learn something about you, which uh, uh, ID or, or uh, the environment you are using for programming or development, AI, other. Nobody uses WIM. By charm, Jupiter notebooks, at least somebody. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I will return, sorry for that. By charm, it's dominates, okay. By charm is good choice at least uh, from my point of view. It is the professional in ID and the best one on the market. And Jupyter Notebook is the most popular. If I can suggest you also Jupyter, uh, uh, like Lab is uh, the best one. And even PyCharm has it implemented, so good choice. Okay, so thank you for that. Uh, now I have better, like, uh, uh, I will get to know you better. Uh, what are basically, what type of, like, professional developers are here. Okay, so let's move on. So AI, AGI, or human level AI, and the current trends basically uh you probably uh have seen this uh, videos the audio is not so important in this case but uh, as for current trends uh, this is like uh, the newest stuff uh, which came 
out uh, from OpenAI. It was last uh, week. I would, I would like to basically uh, discuss this, uh, this topics. For those of you, uh, probably not a lot of you, but uh, some of you might don't know what uh, this is about. This is the new technology called Sora, which is not uh, public yet. And uh, basically about a year ago, uh, we all were pretty much hyped uh, around uh, ChatGPT and the possibilities of large language models. But this technology basically uh, using uh, text, basic text prompts, which are uh, here, for example, prompt is stylish woman walks down a Tokyo street filled with warm blowing uh, neon and animated city signage. You will basically input this text into the system called Sora. And uh, the output that you will get will not be generated text, but generated complete video, including physics, including uh, audio so far is not implemented, but will be soon because OpenAI also has technologies for uh, speech recognition and voice recognition. But this is basically the biggest leap in uh, like decades as for generated content. So uh, what I would uh, like to like discuss basically is the uh, possibilities that uh, uh, this uh, like creates uh, also with connection of uh, the uh, AI uh, itself. And uh, uh, let's start at the beginning. So OpenAI, what is OpenAI? OpenAI is... Uh, uh, it started as a non-profit project uh, and organization that was created by Elon Musk at the beginning. And the goal was to connect the basically geniuses uh, within like AI industry to put them on one place and uh, give them funding, 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 give them money basically to do uh, whatever they want to do or how to improve AI. Uh, what the day later Elon Musk like left this uh, company and uh, a few years uh, after that, uh, basically Microsoft came, give them a lot of money, give them like full infrastructure of uh, like cloud services, Azure, and let them do their work. So uh, the first output uh, or the first main output uh, uh, was when uh, ChatGPT uh, uh, like came out and uh, it was a big thing. Uh, also, the business division was created of OpenAI and uh, what Microsoft Microsoft did uh, was basically took this uh, like technology of uh, text generation and uh, put that into the products. Uh, but what is needed to like uh, explain in this phase and how we get to this kind of like uh, video generation uh, is connected with uh, something called AGI. For those who are not familiar, uh, this is basically goal of the whole like AI research to create uh, artificial general intelligence. That's what the acronym AGI means. And general in this case mean like general knowledge, general uh, for any purpose, for basically any uh, uh, activity that humans are doing, uh, we will have AI that is capable to do it all. Uh, of course, this is so far just, we have not reached that yet, but this is basically the main goal like about the hundred years ago, uh, when Alan Turing started and uh, 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 later uh, Hinton, Professor Hinton, and so on and so on. A lot of like computer scientists, this was the main goal to create something that will even like surpass the like uh, human level of intelligence. And that is the uh, third acronym, HLAI. Human level AI is the level of intelligence that is on the same level as the smartest people on earth or the human level of intelligence. 
it is expected as for the plan that this will be probably the shortest phase because if we like create something uh, similar to human intelligence, the phase when it will be like uh, uh, on this level will be probably in like nanoseconds because it will, if it works, uh, it will become like uh, AGI or uh, uh, possibly super intelligence, which is the phase after that will be pretty quick, but we are not there yet. But the research that uh, OpenAI is doing is basically the main goal is creating AGI. And uh, you have to also understand that ChatGPT, uh, which came out like about a year ago, and now Sora, which is year after that, which you see like before you, these are jo these are all just semi products of uh, of the main goal, which is creating AGI. And the goal has all the governments in the world, whoever get this technology, whoever gets something that is like usable for any use case or for any human activity, will be the winner of the like AI race globally. And this is the next source of growth for everybody. So uh, you have to understand that this uh, like uh, generation of uh, basically uh, videos from text from point of like research or from point of uh, like artificial intelligence, what it creates on the background is a uh, creating model that is uh, uh, basically 3D with all the graphics on the background. It's basically simulation. And this is very important for developing something like um, uh, AGI because we as a people are creating some, uh, these kind of like models within our brains. This is how we uh, are able to operate in physical world. We are creating in our brains uh, the um, like um, photons that uh, are coming to like retina and the retina is interpreted by the brain. We are basically our brains are creating these, uh, uh, whatever we see around us and the imitation on computers that you see before us in this video is basically simulating this kind of like 3D world uh, on uh, like based on prompts. And uh, as you see, even the shaders are uh, great, the reflections are great. So. Currently, what we are experiencing, and it is about a week old, we like uh, uh, are getting into the new level. And this will have like disruptive effects on, for example, cinematic industry or uh, basically creative work in general. So uh, uh, marketing and so on and so on. Also, potentially, this technology can be also misused. So uh, we will go later to that uh, in uh, the ethics part of this talk. So uh, what I would like to like communicate to you is basically to see it differently. See this even as a semi-product and ChatGPT is also semi-product. They already like selling this and it is useful, but uh, the main goal is and always was even from the beginning to develop uh, artificial general intelligence and basically that's it okay this has happened recently also uh, there was uh, also world economic forum but there was, was also a summit at uh, dubai recently it was world government summit and the best like uh, brains within the also ai industry were there uh, the guy on the picture you probably know him this is ceo of openai sam altman and uh, what he basically introduced the idea to uh, create basically infrastructure uh, as for graphics chip or a special dedicated chip and uh, the budget that he asked for also to like uh, people at uh, uh, 
United Arabian Emirates, but uh, in ge general, whoever has the money, uh, he would like to raise uh, $7 trillion uh, dollars, US dollars. Just to put this number into the perspective, uh, uh, basically global GDP, whatever like we have on this planet, whoever like works is part of this like global GDP is contributing. And globally, we as a civilization or uh, the world, we are creating uh, a year about 100 trillion. So what he is basically asking is uh, about one tenth of global GDP to put uh, as an investment into the this creation of uh, AI chip infrastructure into something uh, called like UDA uh, UDA course. Uh, uh, those of you who are like using, for example, uh, GTX cards uh, from NVIDIA or deep learning and so on and so on, you know what I'm talking about. So he wants to like create the biggest infrastructure because he uh, like identified that the main limitations as for uh, uh, reaching the goal of artificial general intelligence is basically the hardware currently is not enough to like ambition uh, to reach this in coming years. Uh, there are other countries you can compare this uh, number to. It's about half of the China economy uh, in a year or double the German or German and uh, Japan economy in, uh, in a year. So a lot of money is put into this with the uh, goal to reach uh, basically AGI. This is uh, uh, the... Uh, definition by Andrew Ng, the author of uh, the most popular uh, deep learning uh, uh, course or the uh, his teaching uh, deep learning uh, uh, on this uh, platform or called uh, Coursera. And uh, this is the division. So uh, artificial narrow intelligence, narrow means the weak, uh, which we are already using in businesses and are improving our economy and improving our uh, like robots and so on and so on. This is something that we already have. So when you will see like uh, this definition or A and I or the narrow intelligence, this is something that is like special use case of artificial intelligence, special application of artificial intelligence. And it is great in one task, for example, playing chess, or uh, even self-driving cars that are not uh, done yet, uh, like um, in the best way, uh, this is uh, still narrow. So AGI is something that surpasses this and is useful for anything that human do. Uh, on this topic, like uh, reaching the human level AI, uh, there is like special conference. I had the pleasure to be uh, on one of uh, the uh, like editions. It was a few years back at uh, 2018. And uh, we were also partners, uh, Get Data Institute and Pi Data Slovakia. We were partners of this event. It was organized by Good AI. Uh, you probably know Marek Rosa. Uh, and the main uh, uh, speaker at uh, uh, that time or uh, at this conference, which is happening each year, but each time on like different continent. So uh, uh, this time in uh, 2018, uh, we were the lucky ones because it happened near to Slovakia. It was in Prague, in Czechia. And uh, the best like uh, uh, experts at AI or this kind of uh, area, human level AI and reaching possibly AGI were at one place at one time. Ben Gretzel was the main star. Those of you who uh, already uh, probably know Sofia, which is first humanoid that even get uh, like citizenship uh, of one country. Uh, he's the author of that. It was uh, uh, earlier when he was at uh, uh, 
uh, he was working on robotics. And basically his concept is that even like AI or AGI is partially uh, the like person uh, with physical uh, like uh, ability to uh, uh, interact in physical world. It is not just software. So his goal is basically reaching uh, like AGI, which will be entity that will combine the physical and the uh, the software or the intelligence that we can simulate on computers. Uh, this uh, has not been reached yet, but uh, currently the OpenAI is the closest company that uh, have uh, uh, that have uh, been closed yet. Uh, his vision was uh, mostly based on blockchain and he wanted to do it uh, for benefit of everyone. Uh, the one of the disadvantages of approach of open ai is basically it is closed software they uh, have not uh, like uh, uh, published they have not made the research that uh, open ai done uh, make it public so it's not scientifically like um, uh, published so we really don't know how for example data was collected it is there is speculation that even the whole data, uh, like dark web, uh, the classical web, the uh, like books, all the books that ever been published, uh, or the all the texts uh, in whatever language were probably scraped from the net and used for basically creation of uh, Chat GPT, but nobody really knows. So this is just one of the speculation. The attitude of Ben. Uh, was different to make it transparent and for benefit of everybody. But uh, yeah, uh, we are the other like approach uh, so far is winning. So yeah, that's it. And uh, now the questions, or at least I would like to answer the questions when this will happen or what the future brings. Uh, this uh, like visualization or this uh, chart is basically uh, uh, showing us how we are really bad at predicting anything. Uh, uh, like if you look uh, like to the past and uh, check the predictions uh, when this kind of like uh, artificial intelligence or this level of artificial intelligence comes, it was uh, in 2020, everybody was talking about 50 years. It's not near. Later, when like uh, uh, GPT-3 uh, was announced and uh, later GPT-3.5 uh, came and so on and so on, it was like 30 years, 18 years. It was still like less and less uh, what also this chart shows. Uh, if the like um, error of these predictions uh, continues, we will probably reach this very soon. It will be uh, 2026. If the forecast is uh, based on like uh, good data, so another scenario of this forecast, we will probably reach it to 2030. Uh, what this means, there are like positive uh, view of this. There is also negative view of that. Uh, what we have have to understand is basically that the humans will no longer be the uh, most uh, like uh, intelligent uh, entity on this planet. This is for some people it's like uh, coming the dream come true basically, uh, but uh, for others uh, who are more conservative and also. Uh, consider the uh, disadvantages and uh, also potential risks are on the other like uh, part of uh, part of the spectrum. Uh, but uh, what it uh, like can get us by the year 2030, basically reaching AGI can open the totally, for example, new materials generating, it can generate molecular structures or uh, create uh, uh, materials that are 
resistant in a space. So it can basically open the possibilities to like uh, enter the space uh, and uh, reach like uh, reach the stars basically it can help us discover our solar system and even beyond that is one of the usage or how the agi can help us uh, also it can really help us in optimizing uh, basically our own planet so basically if we can simulate uh, the uh, uh, like world in general in physics uh, on like one to one uh, world um, on a computer, we can uh, run different scenarios. Uh, uh, also, as for uh, ecology, uh, what will basically if we produce uh, um, fossil fuels? Uh, based on this model, we can predict that there will be problem in like five years and so on and so on. So this kind of predictions, uh, if we have something uh, so powerful that can basically uh, take all the knowledge that we have or we generate as a people on the planet and our activity can be basically monitored and uh, can be you know, like tracked we can base uh, on the physics that we can simulate on computer. And we have this kind of intelligence that can basically understand us better than ourselves. And it can understand the, on a planetary uh, like level, understand every system that is happening uh, within like world. It can help us to basically become more ecological, it can uh, develop new, uh, like uh, uh, new, uh, also molecules for uh, 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 coping with problems like COVID or epidemics. It can basically uh, prolong our lives. It can uh, open totally like different uh, possibilities, all because of uh, reaching. Uh, the this kind of intelligence that will uh, at least uh, in the scenario that uh, this uh, intelligence will be uh, uh, at least benevolent or uh, will be we will do it right and uh, teach this entity uh, like our moral system that for example uh, like within every culture like uh, killing is not good uh, stealing is not good, uh, is, uh, like uh, our moral system. Uh, so if we teach it well, and if this kind of like systems will adapt to us and will be close to us, uh, we have better chance to like get the best benefits uh, uh, out of it and uh, it will be benevolent, it will tolerate our existence because it will surpass us as for intelligence. So this is the goal. This is the like new gold rush for like reaching this will be for anybody who like owns this kind of system will be gold mine. So uh, these are possible scenarios. So as you see, it is pretty close or getting closer. And thanks to the research, in business and in academia. So we have to prepare for them. And about that will be the rest of the call, of the talk. Okay, this is um, another view that I would like to present. This is from those of you who are gamers, at least I was uh, back in when I was like 15, 16 years. And one of the like most popular uh, game simulation basically uh, was at the time uh, something called Deus Ex. It was created by Warren Spector. And uh, like the concept, uh, it was uh, the, it was sci-fi RPG. And uh, the vision of the future at that time, at uh, 2000, was that uh, by the year 2051, uh, will be, uh, world will be dangerous, chaotic place, terrorists operate openly and so on and so on. But the this uh, like picture that 
I presented, this is one of the endings. It, uh, this game has like three endings. One of them was basically about a symbiosis of these artificial general intelligence with humans. Another was basically destroying this kind of like strong AI. And the other one was basically that this AGI wins and uh, the humanity basically ends. It will be the last last uh, like uh, creation of uh, of the humanity. So uh, just for inspiration or just for comparison, we are getting close to this uh, year. And basically all the technologies that were like uh, there or uh, at least predicted there, uh, we currently have. Uh, for example, in last few months, there were already like uh, first trials uh, by volunteers as for Neuralink, another technology that is developed by Elon Musk, or at least the research was uh, started by him. And it basically, so far, it's not working, but uh, possibly it can connect the artificial intelligence with the human, with the brain, like on a hardware level. So basically, also this uh, kind of like sci-fi is about combination of these two uh, uh, worlds and put them together, basically creating like cyborgs, enhanced people, enhanced uh, something called transhumanism. So this is one of the vision. And we are uh, like on, on the uh, like trajectory towards this. So we have to prepare at least if the AGI comes uh, in some point, I don't know when, but uh, in some, at some point it will be, we will not be able to compete basically with this kind of strong AI. So we have to open the discussion also on this topic, basically what is humanity and uh, uh, what uh, on what level we should possibly like combine with this technology to stay competitive. Otherwise, we just have to like uh, uh, accept that uh, we will not be the smartest one on the on the planet. Okay, so uh, this is another video that I would like to present. This is technology that uh, is not so popular. You probably. Uh, or some of you may heard about it, but it's called Flawless. This is basically the same technology, the like creation of uh, models that are simulation of reality on photorealistic level. So uh, Sora does this from the text to the video. This uh, technology uh, developed by Flawless AI is uh, taking a video or uh, in this case, uh, film as an input and is able to modify it on the level that uh, you can switch like, uh, do like this and you will have different language. Uh, this and you will have a completely different, uh, like you can mute the actor or you can, uh, basically uh, completely change what the person is talking uh, about and so on and so on. So uh, basically this will be a revolution in, for example, generating your favorite film or movie that uh, uh, you like, or basically like uh, something like Toy Story generated uh, by computers. And you can recreate it based on your preferences. So individualized like movies uh, for you in your language, in completely uh, your, for example, you would like to have different ending of the movie. Uh, we will have technologies very soon that are able to like create that. So this is revolutionary for filmmakers, for any creative, and uh, also this is like technology that have uh, potentially disruptive effect on like uh, fake news and uh, uh, basically news industry so uh, this is one of the one of the uh, potential potential usage so in film film industry how it works it basically creates the mask the performance tracking create 3d model and apply it 
uh, apply it on the go, like audio, video, and uh, you will have completely like different uh, experience after it. And now, uh, what these kind of technologies like opens uh, and other questions, basically how to deal with uh, uh, ethics within AI. Is this like ethical? As I mentioned, for example, uh, it's probable or uh, nobody has proof, but it's probable that the best performing like large language models uh, were developed based on basically um, uh, author's data that nobody like paid for. It was basically just scraped from the web, even from like black market and so on and so on. Everything that is text was used for creating something very strong. The uh, currently best model is no longer at uh, OpenAI. It was created by Google. It's called Gemini 0.5. But one of the reasons why the Sora was like published was basically to overcome or um, like present completely different technology, the video from text. But we have like two strong models currently. One is ChatGPT 4 and another one is Gemini 0.4 before it was called BART, which is currently leading. But what this means, uh, at least uh, the point of view that I would like to like present is that we have to like really think deeply on how to uh, how disruptive effects this can have this can have for example i'm one of the signatories of the uh, there was like petition for basically stopping the like research in this area of large language models it was published a few months ago and the reason why i signed this was basically the the tempo of the uh, like uh, innovation in this area, you cannot stop progress. Like I know that, but uh, uh, the to basically to keep up with the news or keep up with the new technologies that I will like on daily basis, I try it like nonstop, but it's so quick and the breakthroughs are so, so quick that you are basically unable to like cope with the news. Uh, we are in this, like, uh, currently in this situation. So uh, it's uh, even, like, uh, the best academics, uh, they are developing this system, but even they are not fully, like, uh, involved into some breakthroughs that other companies are doing. So uh, this is basically uh, the development becomes so quick and the innovation cycle has become so quick that only few players on the market globally, big companies like uh, Microsoft, which is OpenAI, is basically it's basically Microsoft, uh, Google, uh, and uh, like Amazon, Oracle, and so on and so on. All these companies that have like the cloud infrastructure and have the possibilities, or Apple, uh, have the possibilities to. Uh, like create something like that and to host these kind of models uh, are the like winners or are the winners in this like coming age and the companies uh, basic companies or, or potential startups new companies that are coming to the market are basically unable to compete because they don't have like, infrastructure for or, or like keeping it or uh, on which on this data can be like created new innovation, new models. But if the uh, if this is all covered by only few companies, we are getting into the like uh, different kind of like world, which is not uh, so uh, like democratized or not so open. So uh, uh, basically, like some economists call it like neo-feudalism, but uh, it basically, uh, it's techno-oligarchy or something like that. So we have to be aware of that. And this, like how are data, because we are the source of the data that uh, these models use. 
they are trying to imitate us, our intelligence, and to basically make sense of the data that we are creating. So we are the uh, inputs uh, and our activities inputs of these models. So whether it's ethical to use it to basically track everything and to use it for training models and to get benefit, uh, financial benefit from that, whether it's ethical, I don't have the answer. Uh, basically, it helps us to develop this technology, but whether it's ethical, I'm not uh, people who will like decide that. Uh, it is uh, also judicial like question, but we should like discuss about this because if we like don't even start the discussion, uh, we will like uh, keep behind and these systems uh, can destroy us potentially uh, if we do it badly or based on uh, uh, something called bias. These uh, most of these models are basically biased because the data that we generate are, are biased. There were a lot of like problems in past. A lot of like models had to be like put away from uh, like usage because uh, the bias has become, for example, some AI were become racist and posting uh, on Twitter like a hate speech and so on and so on. So we have to be aware of these problems and basically create different approach. One of the leaders of this different approach is uh, within like European Union, basically the uh, uh, AI Act or the uh, like uh, legislature that is uh, happening uh, within Europe and also other countries already announced that they will go this way, are uh, trying to deal with uh, this, uh, this kind of problems. But it's not like solved yet. Basically, it's uh, the AI Act is all about like a rating of these uh, models based on risk, potential risk, this kind of technology like AGI or uh, uh, ranking systems as for, uh, for example, collecting um, uh, uh, like data about citizens, uh, something that China used, but uh, some even other countries use this kind of systems. These are basically banned. Uh, based on this legislature and are uh, set as uh, the highest risk, highest potential risk uh, technologies based on like these uh, AI models. So uh, something has started, but we are still behind. So even the top lawyers or even the best like uh, brains within like European Commission or uh, like uh, European Parliament and so on and so on, even the the best ones are not able to cope with the like uh, uh, the technology, uh, the uh, the tempo of coming new technologies. So uh, we have to be aware. In the past, also companies were able to plan for like two years, three years. Uh, during communism, there was like five years planning and so on and so on. Currently, in a praxis, in like within like uh, industry, you cannot even like you have to innovate in uh, like a horizon of two months or three months and it's getting like shorter. So one quarter of the year. And if you don't innovate, you are basically left behind because new technologies come. If you are not able to adapt, don't have the infrastructure, don't have the data, and don't have like uh, optimal position on the market, you are out of the market. And this has become uh, quicker and quicker. So we are in the coming years, the innovation cycle that uh, basically companies need to cope with will be in the weeks later when this kind of like technologies like AGI, it will be in hours maybe and so on and so on so basically the the source of innovation will no longer be human brain but will be these kind of systems so uh, molecular structures as i mentioned uh, like new products new like uh, combination of products new research uh, in every scientific uh, like area will be generated uh, by by these models. So we are uh, going into completely different like economy, completely different like world that we will be living uh, 
Okay. Uh, okay, so we have to think carefully how to implement these models and what kind of models are worth developing and what are basically limitations that we don't want to cross. Uh, like a lot of, uh, lot of research is done uh, also in application of uh, AI, for example, in a military, in like uh, uh, in like uh, security industry and so on, so on cameras, analyzing video real time, recognizing faces and so on and so on. We have to be careful also in this area of uh, there will be basically no anonymity in the future if we develop this kind of like intelligence and that the data will be stored without uh, our permission or for uh, a long time long time on some server so uh, uh, also ethical uh, perspective on for example military systems uh, based on ai basically if robots will like be used in wars in uh, using uh, to kill other people that is completely like uh, at least from my point of view uh, uh, not so ethical so uh, this is this is something that is a very like dangerous area one of my friends uh, he is doing uh, something called uh, uh, quantum ai he told me one story like the uh, videos uh, from Boston uh, Robotics or Boston Dynamics. We all know them, but uh, just like uh, imagine this kind of robot with one little like uh, uh, gun on top of that machine gun. And uh, if you are not scared, I don't know what like uh, scare you most. So. We have to discuss also this kind of like issue, how it will be used, uh, models that are able to like cover all the aspects of uh, of uh, our lives and uh, we'll have uh, intelligence that will surpass us. I know it sounds like Skynet and so on and so on, like sci-fi, but uh, this sci-fi is becoming uh, our reality and we have to deal with that. Uh, one uh, one way is to how to cope it is by laws. Another one is, uh, for example, by ban banning uh, some technologies and some usage of this technology. Uh, and I would like to this part to end with quote by Marvin Minsky, one of the like uh, leaders within like AI research from the past. Uh, but the big f uh, feature of human level intelligence is not what it does when it works, but what it does when it's stuck. So how it basically fails. And those of you who are working with AI, uh, we all like uh, experience uh, the like situation and a lot of them when these systems are failing, like constantly failing, constantly like uh, giving bad results and it's all about uh, fine tuning okay so to uh, another like uh, uh, era that is coming is era of individualized uh, chat bots and basically we are getting into um, uh, the area of explainable ai so this slide is all about the crossing from these like high level abstraction or the thinking about something that will surpass uh, um, our intelligence. And this is about how the attitude can be different and how to basically understand this model better and how to implement. There is area of research or AI research, something called trustworthy AI uh, or a responsible AI or the explain, explainable AI. This is uh, basically the same. It's about uh, the uh, correct uh, like uh, um, libraries and uh, tools basically how to uh, look into the like black box of these models this is area of uh, also uh, like my phd or my research 
And this is also about implementation of this system in our like public area, in our like uh, in government, on ministries, on like implementation in praxis to like help develop, uh, for example, economic uh, uh, like effectiveness on the market better. How to implement basically government services better. How to um, uh, how to do it uh, that uh, these systems are basically trustworthy, and uh, this is a very sensitive area. Uh, there is potential high risk of uh, misuse of the data of all the citizens, like within every country, within like every government is dealing with these problems. How to implement these uh, systems so that uh, it is safe? Uh, these uh, kind of like uh, uh, um, models have to be basically the trust is a must. Uh, that is like kind of motto. So you have to trust these systems, even in business, even in government. Otherwise, you will not get the users basically of these systems. So we will like find alternatives. So how to make it safe for everybody and how to make it work for everybody for benefit of the whole society. And this is pretty tricky. Uh, you will basically have to on the one uh, like area, uh, simplicity is one of the way. And uh, uh, you are basically making uh, uh, like decision whether simplicity, simplicity is better or the priority or explainability is priority within each of the like library or tool that uh, uh, is uh, applied in this area. What is behind it? It's behind that is basically mathematics. Uh, this is, uh, these are some of the tools that, uh, for example, I am working on, but what is uh, like important to say uh, in this area, uh, I have uh, pretty much uh, advantage in this area because uh, these uh, like uh, concepts of something called Shapley values, there was one uh, statistician, uh, later he uh, was laureate of uh, uh, Nobel Prize or um, the prize in memory of uh, Albert Nobel. And uh, it was in area of uh, this rating of the models, rating of the uh, uh, basically machine learning models, or also it can be used also for deep learning or uh, like more layers of, uh, of these, um, uh, of these um, uh, machine learning uh, machine learning uh, like models like deep learning by definition deep means that there are three or more layers of uh, artificial neurons and uh, based on the like uh, um, uh, based on the architecture we have different kind of like neural nets and basically the chat gpt is combination of a lot of like neural nets on top of each other and this approach is basically uh, separating each layer and uh, what kind of information, it's analyzing what kind of information during the phase, each phase of learning is transferred to another layer, how it transferred back or forward and so on and so on. So basically the based on the design of the net, also these kind of like tools can be applied and we can understand better how the knowledge uh, is uh, transferred within that, how the system uh, of artificial intelligence basically learns. And uh, the like Shapley values basically rate uh, what kind of like elements, or we call it within AI, we call it the dimensions, but it's basically within table, it's another like parameter based on which parameter are significant for learning how it basically the model how it generate uh, like uh, uh, the the main like uh, numbers that are uh, basically wages of these uh, uh, like uh, parameters of the model so how it learns and how it uh, uh, pushes this like learn stuff 
to another layer and to another model and so on and so on. So Lime is one of them and uh, how it looks uh, and how, what the Shapley values is, uh, how it is uh, calculated. I will now switch to show you some code. This is, this is from, uh, uh, on this topic, uh, I had uh, also a pretty successful like workshop. It was like three years, uh, three uh, hours uh, workshop focus uh, on just these tools. It was uh, last year, but I was there also two years back. It is uh, one of the biggest conferences within Europe. Uh, it's in Prague called Machine Learning Prague. Uh, it's about applied AI. Uh, in application of these uh, like tools and these explainability tools uh, in praxis on models in uh, uh, like companies and so on. So uh, first year when I was there, it was the most successful workshop uh, there. It is the most premium like content on the uh, on the uh, conference. And uh, it was so successful that invited me also the next uh, next year. So this is how the Shapley values uh, is uh, calculated or how we calculate it. So don't get uh, like, do not scare. It's not so complicated. It basically uh, calculates for each like iteration within each cycle that uh, uh, the like model is generated and for each element or for each the dimension or each like basically a uh, column within uh, your source data it calculates which one contributes to the uh, like final uh, output on which level so it basically uh, what it calculates is uh, uh, like uh, uh, values that are uh, like averages and uh, like um, uh, from the final model basically how it each element how it contributes to the final model and how the each uh, like dimension or each column uh, contribute to like learning phase so for each iteration how it contributes and how it contributes to the final model and uh, it uh, basically uh, identifies each one of the like dimension of the model. Uh, it is defined as basically one agent, and it uh, each agent that is this like element or the uh, dimensionality, each uh, each dimension is basically competing within this model, this mathematical model, uh, all together within itself within model how it contributes and there is a rating system so the calculation is in each phase uh, there is creation of the like Shapley values based on that is rated based on that uh, it comes basically to the next phase and it's recalculated and recalculated and recalculated for each iteration uh, to, to the final iteration which is the optimal and optimal version of the model and uh, this calculation basically combines uh, all the partial uh, calculated uh, uh, like uh, numbers so at the end you will have the uh, like best models available this was uh, implemented I will not go into detail but this is uh, like um, something called SHAP it is also the name, uh, like it is based on the mathematics developed by Shapley, the Nobel laureate that I mentioned. So this is all Python uh, data from classical like data set, data frame implemented and this mathematics. And at the end, what it gives us, uh, the visualization layer at the end uh, is in, a, this one is JavaScript. And what it does is basically for each phase, this one, each one of the dot here, it basically calculates for all the phases, all the iterations. So one like point in this direction is one iteration. And for each phase, it calculates the different like colors, 
are basically the dimension and how it uh, like contributes to the to the whole like model and each phase can be like evaluated and so on and so on and at the end you can even make or uh, check the combination of the factors how it like within the iterations how it uh, was calculated how the uh, comparisons are uh, you can basically reduce uh, noise from the model and so on and so on so this is just one of the uh, one of the uh, tools that we have currently so you can go really deeper into how these models behave Shapley is useful, for example, for tabular data. If you have like classical inputs in form of table, there is another approach is, uh, uh, as for like deep learning or uh, computer vision, but the, the uh, like um, the concept is still the same. It's about calculation, how each layer or how each model behaves within training phase and how it, uh, can improve and based on which criteria or which combination of parameters are optimal. So this is uh, this is Shapley and the concept of explainable AI. Nearly every, uh, so far at least I don't know about better uh, like mathematics uh, that can be uh, like applied on this kind of, also deep learning, it's also language agnostic uh, because it's math is uh, useful for it or applicable in each uh, programming language it's also useful for uh, like statistical learning uh, it was originally developed as statistical learning machine learning is basically just automated uh, like statistical learning and deep learning is just a few layers on top of that so the math is still the same ai is all about math and this is one of the like tool set or the mathematical approach, how it can explain how it behaves, what criteria, based on what criteria it is implemented. And this is also the way how to identify which kind of system we can trust and which kind of can implement in business to be safe to uh, basically uh, something that we can trust. So we have to understand Originally, as I mentioned, I, I studied finance, banking. Basically, in this area, nobody, no like owner of the bank will implement system that they don't really understand how it works behind because it's a very sensitive data from bank accounts and so on and so on. So, for example, this like high risk application of AI is a very, really important or uh, insurance industry or everything that has potentially high risk we have to trust these models and the area of research within ai that is focused on this is explainable ai or responsible ai microsoft for example call it so this is really important so these are the uh, tools these are the best books uh, so far one of the by search uh, masses uh, i was uh, even one of the first uh, like opponents or first reader search, uh, like send me his book, uh, even first edition at the beginning. So I was the, among the lucky ones to read it first. And I really like uh, suggest you to read that. It's one of the best uh, like uh, on the market uh, right now. Another great uh, book that uh, if you want to go deeper into this topic is uh, by Parul Pandi. Uh, she's uh, uh, one of the Kegel masters. Uh, Kegel is uh, basically competition. Uh, currently, it was bought by Google, I think. And uh, it's basically a platform for people interested in machine learning, in AI in general. And uh, Parul Pandi was a Kegel master as for Jupyter notebooks, as for in this area, in creating like overview of uh, toolboxes and so on and so on in Python, R and, and other languages. And this uh, like uh, book is especially focused on like uh, machine learning or using these models in high risk applications. So high risk means the sensitive ones, the ones that need that we need to trust.
there is also another great book, uh, which is by Christoph Molnar. Uh, it's uh, free. This one you have to uh, buy. Uh, one is O'Reilly, another one is Pack Publishing. But Christoph uh, uh, has made his book uh, like completely free. So you can uh, read it uh, via web or via PDF uh, publicly available. So if you are interested, these are at least my five senses to suggestion uh, where to find more information and also papers, academic papers in this area. Uh, XAI or explainable AI is pretty, um, uh, pretty deep and uh, pretty uh, like uh, uh, big area of research. Okay, this uh, this graph, I will now enter the area of uh, what this means, for example, within our country. And what's the situation in uh, Slovakia? We are, uh, those of you who are like uh, coming uh, or uh, joining us from outside Europe even, uh, Slovakia is uh, a pretty small country in the center of, uh, or in the heart of uh, Europe. And uh, we have a lot of like, uh, uh, talented people here, a lot of uh, also great researchers also within AI. But what we don't have is, and also here on this graph, you see, we have, we are not very lucky as for uh, this coming wave of automation and uh, this kind of like labor productivity. Basically, the type of economy that we have is pretty labor like extensive and uh, the potential risk of automation we are among within Europe and within globally we are the most uh, potentially affected by this coming wave of automation or application of AI and potentially PGI in praxis so we this is challenge uh, for us and we have to in coming years completely redefine what will be basically source of growth what will be on which areas of uh, economy we should focus on which areas even ai research we should focus how to implement it a lot of basically a lot of challenges uh, like before us and uh, when you look at it from the uh, like perspective of European Union or OECD, in this case, this uh, this is from a report uh, from OECD, we are in pretty deep uh, trouble as for what is coming. Those who want to go deeper, there is also a great report by McKinsey Global Institute on this topic. But uh, basically, the coming wave. Uh, is uh, potentially destructive for economies like uh, like is ours and uh, we are pretty dependent on uh, for example automotive industry and uh, this is pretty like one of the first industries that uh, robotics is already used there but in the coming years the it will be more and more extensive and if we also employment and uh, we is based on this kind of like industries, car industry, uh, in a coming wave of automation and robotics using uh, mechatronics and so on and so on, uh, we will uh, have to adapt and it will be probably robots who will be doing the most of the works and what to do with the people who are like used uh, to work there in the like, uh, uh, in the companies, uh, car uh, in car industry, or um, like Samsung uh, in uh, basically creating uh, creating products in lines uh, that everybody will be potentially like problems, and these are hard to adapt because these people will probably don't have the skills within AI or data science. This will not be so able to adapt and we have to uh, keep up with trends. So these kind of uh, countries here, like Norway, Finland, Sweden, US, uh, Germany, uh, which is one of the like best uh, countries as for 
uh, reaching the top talents within AI globally, uh, Denmark and so on and so on. These are also in problems, but are potentially safe because the risk of uh, automation is not so high there. But the other like Slovenia, Slovakia, Poland, uh, Spain, and so on and so on, we are among the uh, biggest risks and also pretty high uh, uh, in this in this risk of automation. Okay, so uh, it's already there were done there was done already some like improvements in this area. So Slovakia already has some uh, like documents that are coping or some strategies and uh, documents that are coping with these problems. On uh, uh, one of them, uh, which is called Action Plan for Digital Transformation, also AI Slovakia, which is an organization that uh, I am working in, uh, also participate, and we are also participating on uh, basically de uh, developing the solutions uh, based on the like priorities that were uh, set in this uh, action plan or in this document. So already uh, work, some work is done, but uh, there are still a lot of challenges and these like kind of plans have to update on current like development on current development within Europe, on current development globally. And uh, uh, in order to stay competitive, we have to invest basically into like digital agenda and specifically AI, we have to invest much, much larger, larger sums or much more money in order to stay competitive. Uh, 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 how to do it or uh, what we are currently like investing into this area and what is the key how to get out of this uh, trap of uh, not investing enough or investing just enough to get things done or get the studies done but not not so much as for solving the problems uh this kind of like some this is calculation this is one of the reports that were published recently it was in a december last year i was among the within like central and eastern europe is focused of this uh, like report and within like central and eastern europe i was among the people as for representing uh, AS slovakia that were involved into like this research into this uh, like look into deep for each country uh, how to how to basically based on what to analyze uh, uh, you can read more about it also in the interview uh, which uh, is here the report is published by Diri Karziv uh, this is the main report and the other one is the like uh, uh, the interview with me these are the main players, uh, AI Slovakia and Kinit are the main players as for Kinit is mostly research institute and AI Slovakia is the national uh, platform for AI development and Gap Data is the organization that uh, I created. It was based on the, like, uh, uh, my original organization is basically MESA 10 it was which is one of the most successful startups is for reforms in past. Basically, main uh, the reforms in past were done on platform of MESA 10. And this is basically Gap Data Institute is my version of uh, like MESA 10, the think tank that I was originally from. So this is the situation uh, of within Slovakia. The Among the founders of AI yes, Slovakia, the main ones, uh, are uh, American Chamber of Commerce, uh, also ITAS IT Association of Slovakia, and uh, one of the ministries, uh, MIRI, or a Ministry for Regional Development, Investment, and uh, Informatics. Uh, these three entities created basically AI Slovakia uh, 
uh, as it is. And uh, later, uh, also academics, the top universities were included into creating something called AI Slovakia, basically the national platform. Uh, Kinet is a privately owned uh, like research institution. It's also focusing on application of uh, these uh, tools, combining basically academic world with the business world. So completely different specialization, completely different also. Uh, the, the goal is the same to help Slovakia to cope with this problem, but completely different approach. So this is the sum, uh, this is uh, approximation, sum that uh, we are uh, like uh, investing on uh, um, like uh, uh, into companies, into industry and into like um, organizations similar to us. So about uh, 100 million, just 100 million we are investing each year. And these are the, the this is the split of how it is. Uh, one is wealth funds or private equity. Another is uh, uh, startups are basically uh, running their own money, some of them. And uh, yeah, this is this is the situation that we are currently in. Compared to other countries, uh, totally different numbers. There are not like in millions of dollars as I already like uh, uh, showed you uh, like OpenAI or uh, the companies in the US are uh, thinking in trillions, in billions, in completely different numbers. How to stay competitive also on government level, also on like national level with this kind of different approaches. For example, Germany is pushing like uh, billions of uh, euros into the research and application and so on and so on, like uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, China, India. Everybody is investing totally like different sums. I know we are small, we cannot invest so much because we also don't generate so much, but we can invest more. You know, we can, uh, at least from my point of view, can push the AI forward. So far, it is just one of the elements that is supported within digital agenda. At least my point of view, but there are different like opinions on that. But my point of view is that AI should be put on like top or would be uh, should be put out of the digital agenda and put on the pedestal or the be priority. We have to prioritize uh, and support it more broadly and application and business should be much broader and the safety much should be much better. Uh, the storing of the data should be much safer. There were incidents also during COVID where there were some leaks of data, private data and so on and so on. So we don't have so much uh, track record as for security. We have some good records as for uh, developing basically the program strategies and so on and so on, but we are not so good in implementation phase or uh, implementing, supporting innovation in businesses, supporting innovation in uh, also government services. So a lot of room for improvements. I don't want to be critical. I try to at least do my best and also my colleagues, we are trying to do my best but the priorities also as for government should be prioritized better. I think that AI should be like um, the agenda of prime minister or uh, the ministry of economy, uh, also like minister of investment, but it should be like combined power of different uh, uh, like players within uh, uh, like government industry. But there are some other opinions. Uh, it's always about voting, as we know. Okay, so this is a report. Whoever is interested in, you can go deeper. Also, other countries, uh, Czechia and so on, every country was uh, this kind of like one uh, one side report. Okay, so this one, uh, I have another question or another 
uh, activity I prepare for you. Uh, you can join on Slido. And this is basically quiz. Whoever uh, knows this guy. Go to Slido, uh, AI Slovakia, and vote there. You have few seconds still left, about 50 seconds. It's limited by time. Those of you who studied uh, like AI have uh, advantage, but probably not even uh, those can like know it all. Okay, so we have the results now. John took it. Okay, so we have pretty we have we have pretty knowledgeable audience. So yeah, that's right, John took it. For those who uh, have not answered uh, correctly. John Tukey is uh, uh, founder of data science itself, uh, where, as I mentioned at the beginning, also AI belongs. So basically, he developed the first uh, scientific, uh, like Matej Suchy is the winner. Nice. And uh, uh, he set the basics of uh, basically uh, data science itself or scientific approach in analyzing uh, uh, like data. Uh, he created first even data visualization tools that are also extensively used in uh, explainable AI. And uh, he was uh, basically genius at his time. He was working at Bell Labs, one of the leading uh, like industry leaders, uh, basically place in uh, uh, currently it's uh, called at and Labs. Uh, under different name, but uh, it originally started at Bell Labs, and basically it connected all the best brains uh, in various industry in one place, and they were working on a lot of like uh, great uh, projects. Some of them secret, some of them like uh, national security secret, and some of them totally like industry level secret. So based on uh, how to develop uh, technologies that are breakthroughs in industry. And uh, he's done it uh, all. The same the same genius as was uh, uh, the founder of AI, mathematicians Alan Turing. You probably heard more about him. But uh, at least uh, I, 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 I like them both as for their contribution. But uh, from my point of view, John Tukey, was the key person who basically uh, gave us all the tools that we currently have uh, in our uh, uh, in our uh, uh, toolboxes, and uh, he was the founder of data science uh, approach and scientific approach applied in this area in uh, general. So uh, this is for quiz, but what it really means, and I will go now is for explaining uh, like AI more into deeper. Uh, this is something that we developed uh, uh, within like Gib Data Institute. This is basically concept how the knowledge or how the uh, model and how the knowledge from the model is generated. This is basic concept, uh, at least in, for example, consulting, I applied it on like daily basis. At the beginning, you have a problem. The definition of problem, something that we want to solve, for example, uh, translation of uh, uh, text to different languages. We clearly define this and get the right data. Probably in case of translation, it will be data 
uh, one text, the same text in one language and another language. We will then collect and combine these uh, like sources of data. Then we will like transform this uh, like data and uh, uh, clean them. So we will create like universal table or put them into structure, basically the data. Then we will visualize, explore this data. Then we will create the model and validate it. Uh, we will potentially find flaws. We can rate the models based on the Shapley values and so on and so on. If it's OK, uh, the problem is solved. We will find the insight. We will get the knowledge. We are basically separating the noise from the data and trying to uh, find the fundaments within the data something significant that will help us explain how the model behaves, how the underlying uh, underlying like uh, problem is analyzed. And if there is still a problem, we will basically iterate again and also collect data, clear, transform, and again, and again, and again. And then if it is solved, we will simplify it, communicate it, explain it to somebody who has the power to decide uh, in a praxis or in uh, the like uh, industry, it is mostly like CEO or C level of the management. And if they say go, we are we do, we do want it. It is deployed in praxis, and it uh, uh, in optimal case it will bring the client uh, money or the company money. Uh, in government sector or in public sector, the main like decision maker is, for example, minister or prime minister and so on and so on. And if it's deployed, it helps in general society. Uh, it's public good, basically. So uh, this, why I am like uh, uh, showing this. Uh, all of this, like a few years ago, data science was the hot topic or the hot uh, uh, if everybody wants to like get the best uh, job, uh, you have to like enter data science. You have to uh, become data scientist. A lot of hype, a lot of like uh, basically industry tried at the time, tried to create that hype uh, artificially because they want to invite uh, people mostly in academia, in PhD studies into industry to solve industry problems. So it was motivated by uh, inviting talents to like industry in uh, uh, in like commercial world, because in the past uh, also a lot of like the main breakthroughs in AI or in scientific approach were done uh, in academia. It was the top experts in academia who have done the biggest breakthroughs in AI. In last decades, we were in paradoxical situation where the most like uh, uh, effectiveness and the most uh, uh, like creativity, the most talent was in industry, and uh, uh, even the like research branches of like OpenAI or Google and Meta, Facebook, and so on and so on. They were putting out papers, breakthrough papers that were creating totally like new models, uh, pushing basically boundaries of our knowledge uh, much farther. This is something uh, atypical uh, because, as I mentioned, this was not normal if you look on the scale of uh, decades before, but this has been done. What is doing uh, like currently? Uh, incoming like uh, chat GPT, uh, this automation stuff. The work of data scientists is basically automated. So all this scheme, which is here, like the, there were prediction that uh, this kind of like complex work of data scientists will be something that you will always be employed and so on and so on. And uh, basically the AI will just eliminate the less sophisticated work and so on so what i can like tell you from my experience uh, so is that uh, probably data scientists will be uh, among the first who will be automated 
because all of this stuff can be automated. It's all data-based, all uh, tool-based approaches. It can never like imitate the creativity. And uh, uh, so basically, if you like focus on model uh, and you understand it on like statistical level, what is happening there and how to model the, how to separate noise, noise and the signal and how to create the better models, you will always create better like output. But uh, this kind of work can be very easily uh, like automated. And this kind of like vision of uh, like within data science, AI and uh, coming of better and stronger AI, this is completely like uh, the past. This in each phase can be automated and um, we are also getting uh, to completely new world. So basically designers of the AI systems that understand this uh, like uh, uh, deeply will be the ones who will like implement this kind of uh, this kind of model. So who has the deep knowledge and can use the automation tools has still advantage, but in order to stay competitive, uh, like just to enter like data science, currently I would not at least advise uh, this because it's completely automated now. Most of the tools that we are currently use in praxis or in consulting are completely automated in generation for you know, like models. It's called the uh, model generators or automated generation of models. A lot of companies are in this uh, industry. Okay, so what is basically uh, what is happening in the in the process? So, as I mentioned at the beginning, we have the raw data. So this is the like uh, lowest level. Then we put this data into context, context. how it was collected from what sources and so on and so on uh, we are getting into structured data or something called information so combined knowledge uh, then the synthesis of the structured data we are getting the knowledge uh, we are uh, inputting insight so maybe we understand now this better May hopefully we will get some understanding of uh, things behind that so wisdom and if we add purpose then we can uh, get a better decision uh, how to like react and at the uh, if we add power if we have the possibility to change something then at the top of the like pyramid we have the uh, main goal which is change from the raw signals to the uh, change in praxis so this is basically the concept what even AI is doing. It is generating uh, like from the raw data, from uh, outputs uh, of our activity, this is inputs for AI. Uh, it's uh, basically, it's distillation process of collecting information, generating knowledge, uh, getting wisdom uh, based on that act, uh, make a decision and the final is change. The concept of human level AI, AGI, is something that we are trying, we as humans do, and we try to model it in, in the systems uh, called like AI systems or deep learning system, or whatever you call it, it's still the same. And this basically uh, is getting automated and we are getting into completely new world where this will not be uh, our work as humans, because there will be something, some entity, some intelligence that will be much uh, better in basically every aspect of this process, in every aspect of our knowledge. And it is now for us to like accept this reality that we are not the smartest, or at least in near future, we will not be the smartest uh, uh, like uh, entities or animals <laughs> on this earth so we will create uh, something that surpasses us in every element of uh, like intelligence so yeah uh and another questions or another interactivity that i added uh from your point of view 
is data reality, is the main signal or the uh, like um, uh, the raw uh, face of data, is this what we are collecting? Is this from your point of view reality or not? I'm giving these questions a lot on various conferences or meetups and uh, completely different answers for completely different audiences. So I'm really like interested in what this audience expert level using PyCharm and uh, like knowing John Tukey, how they see things. Okay, let's get 10 inputs. Okay, so probably no voting, uh, no more voting. So the answer, at least from my point of view, also here the uh, like decision uh, varies or uh, is different whoever you ask. Uh, you answered yes, data is a reality. And I have bad news for you <laughs> because as we, uh, for example, I originally come from social sciences. Uh, we understand that well as social scientists that the data is really not uh, the reality. We are, uh, maybe the social sciences are better in identifying the lot of problems is for collecting data and we understand pretty well that uh, the data are not a good way how to how to be sure that what we are analyzing is the fundamental problem uh, uh data is not reality this quote is <laughs> Uh, from uh, H2O AI meetup. Those who don't know H2O AI, H2O AI is one of the leaders globally uh, as for applied AI in industry. Uh, it is a US based company. Uh, they have also uh, a branch in Prague, uh, started uh, 2018 or 19, I, I'm not sure. But either way, uh, I was invited to give similar talk as here, also there in their uh, like branch and uh, I asked them the same question uh, whether it's data uh, they answer it uh, differently so uh, uh, yeah data uh, cannot be full reality and this is the disadvantage also the models based on AI for example what open AI is doing what uh, we are basically creating uh, or Google is doing and so on and so on. There are limitations on what we can measure and how uh, these underlying data is all about the human activity. But the human activity is totally different in different phases or different uh, like um, uh, eras or different situation on the market. Uh, different like approaches. Also, there are some mistakes in storing data. Uh, most of us who are like computer scientists know that it's not so easy to like store it safely, uh, that uh, the data is like immutable and uh, it is uh, like uh, in best way stored for a long time. And uh, it is uh, complete data uh, for the area that you are analyzing. The approach of uh, like computer scientist or AI engineer is more that uh, the vision is completely autonomous system create based on data. Data is something pure, something immutable, something that we are using on daily basis. Some this is inputs we are like creating models based on that. This is like pure AI approach. The attitude of uh, social science is different we are much more uh, 
like doubtful about the sources of the data, about the definition, how the uh, how the like parameter was defined, what we are basically collecting. For example, GDP that we mentioned. Is GDP good indicator of wealth of each nation? Uh, it's much more complex uh, and there are different like approaches. From my point of view, for example, GDP is not good indicator at all because uh, it uh, doesn't count uh, other elements that are important, like ecology or uh, like um, uh, health systems, quality of health systems, or um, like um, natural uh, resources, and so on and so on. So GDP is just uh, collecting what is spent uh, by government, by uh, like uh, industry, uh, export, import by like uh, countries, other countries outside and what we are importing from other countries. So it's basically just calculation based on transfers that is based on money. But there are also other elements that make our lives better that are not completely like calculated in GDP. So at least from my point of view, this is not so well but if you like get the data uh from gdp to like uh, completely people with different approach like computer scientists they will just take it create model and they are happy uh, we are from social science who are coming to like computer science originally from social science background are much more doubtful and much more uh, view the data as potentially misleading us in predicting what we are trying to predict if i like um, can explain it this way okay and uh, this comes also uh the other topic how this data is basically used and ai ethics of the strong ai itself in case that uh, you are asking what to do now basically you know all this, you know the uh, toolboxes that we have. We can go deeper into understanding these uh, tools and AI models better. But what to basically, what's the next big thing or what's the next steps and how to like adapt on these changes? What basically differs us from the machines? What are different approaches of machines and us humans? Uh, I even like get a lot of uh, questions also from my friends uh, around me, basically what, if they have kids, uh, uh, what, how to, what teach my kids in order to stay competitive in the coming uh, of age of AI is basic question. And what I answer them is basically the differentiation between the world of machines and the world of humans in the future, something that we can still have some competitiveness is basically empathy. Uh, the answer is we should not lose our humanity, our value systems, our like ethics uh, that uh, some of the like uh, uh, religious uh, are teaching us at least i'm like totally uh atheistic but uh, i also value the like contribution of some religions that uh, as for creating basically a human uh like, like value systems and uh, the ethics uh, that is for example in slovakia it's tradition christian values uh, this uh, or uh, Judeo-Christian values, this is basically the value system also as for me, because I live here in Europe, here in uh, Slovakia. So uh, I accept this, uh, this kind of value system. And this is the value system is very important uh, if we want to develop some system based on AI. It should have the value system of the country that where it is uh, developed uh, we have to not lose uh, in order to like be more successful uh, in implementing ai we should not lose the uh, morals or the ethical system that is cultural 
that is uh, from generation to generation is uh, like um, uh, we are we are taught basically the the values to uh, operate based on them. These systems that are mechanical, that are uh, strictly uh, rational, and so on and so on, uh, uh, are basically just. Uh, they are in disadvantage uh, towards us and will still be because we uh, cannot, so far at least, we cannot implement uh, the empathy or the uh, these kind of like morals into systems of machines. So this is something that you should, that if you are asking, uh, that you should like teach your kids to become more like uh, empathetic or uh, to basically uh, understand even more from like social perspective than just pure calculation based on math and so on and so on. Uh, what are the next challenges? This is area of uh, like transhumanism. I partially uh, covered it before, but now I would like to like go deeper into this topic. This like a neural link of this technology that is coming and will probably be available in a coming maybe decade or so, this is completely game changer. If we, in at some point, we will combine the knowledge of the machines, which are much more effective than uh, our own brains, because it was at the beginning, uh, the AI research was combination of all the like scientific uh, industrial scientific branches, the most uh, contribution were done even in area of psychology or neuroscience. Basically the first concept of perceptron, which is uh, the basically neuron, uh, the imitation of a human brain's uh, neuron uh, was inspired by uh, biology, by uh, uh, like uh, on like uh, a level of uh, here are the the uh, it's called biologically inspired systems uh, applied in computer science but uh, later uh, the the perceptron or the concept what we have in our brains is basically a lot of like a uh, lot of computation power that is organic based and we have a lot of these uh, natural like uh, neurons, and we have something called the neuroplasticity. Basically, our ne neurons, uh, the each brain, of each one of us, is much more complex systems, and the scientific approach have not solved this problem. How? What's the basically area of consciousness? What is the how we think? how we can reprogram ourselves, how we can reconnect these dots or these neurons in order to solve much complex problems that uh, we were faced uh, uh, by in the past, for example, uh, uh, like uh, from uh, like first area of creating civilization into more complex task, not just to survive, but to create some culture, some uh, like uh, buildings and so on and so on. Uh, we were like always challenged in the past. This is like uh, uh, the whole generation of humanity, like we were like challenged and we created this capacity for deeper like knowledge. And this neuroplasticity is on biological level. We can rewire our brains uh, for uh, solving a different task. This is something that machines cannot done. It. So they are uh, the concept of biological inspired systems were later uh, like reduced and uh, the our neuron is basically one or zero. Whether it's uh, the electricity is coming through or it's not coming through. So it's binary. But uh, the concepts or the models that we are currently using, there are a lot more like within like zero and one. Uh, we are using the wages or even the the smallest uh, 
number, not just binary, but a lot of different like wages. And we are calculating with that. So it's completely different uh, like uh, concept. We like uh, avoided these like biological inspired systems later on. And what is currently applied in industry is totally different. And what is interesting that these different systems also like Professor Hinton and so on, they are describing that it's much more effective. So from like a uh, brain of each one of us is more capable of computation than any like supercomputer on this planet. But what is interesting that this ability to calculate, uh, the, have the same breakthroughs, our uh, brains are not designed uh, on on that on big computation power and these systems that we currently have that are able to scrape the whole web and creating some meaningful like uh, models based on that they are much more effective in collecting knowledge they can basically communicate one model to another they will just send wages and they can they they have don't have to uh, like sleep they don't have to uh, like uh, basically the human needs so they are much more effective and uh, also uh, time effective and uh, they are designed differently and uh, uh, in solving these tasks they are much better and this is the main like uh, differentiation also within AI you have concept of like machine learning and machine reasoning these uh, most advanced models like Sora or uh, ChatGPT or Gemini that I already mentioned, this is still basically the machine learning. It's just using a lot of data on a lot of computer power. You have uh, basically all the clouds in the world, all the computers in the world can be used for solving this. You will just put the data, get the uh, output out. But the uh, area that is much more interesting and much more complex is something called uh, ma machine reasoning. So basically logic behind how it decides what is, for example, priority and how to simulate this kind of reasoning, this kind of like decision making within computers. And this is at least my point of view, is this is the way if we solve this, how to simulate this reasoning process uh, in computers, this is the way forward in uh, reaching like AGI. And if it has like our value system, it can uh, help us reach what we are like looking for. And at some point, it will need like human input. And that is what basically the superpower of our brain, the neuroplasticity, can be added to these systems of uh, basically artificially created intelligence that is based on pure computation power. So combine these words, uh, this is how we can reach something, something much better. And this is called uh, transhumanism. So this is also answer why Elon Musk is investing in this area, not just space, not just uh, Neuralink, not just uh, like AGI at the beginning, OpenAI. So, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so the theory of consciousness. Uh, last year, one of the activities that we at uh, AI Slovakia had and the Ministry of uh, Development supported was a scientific conference that was organized by uh, uh, my like uh, leader of my dissertation, uh, who is uh, Professor Sinchak, and it's called DISA. Uh, it was uh, uh, in Košice, where also Tuke is located, for those of you who don't know, uh, Technical University Košice. And uh, one of the top speakers, or at least from my point of view, who uh, basically studies this, uh, uh, like uh, this area of uh, theory of consciousness and how to simulate basically thinking process on computers. Uh, uh, her name is uh, Mariam uh, Alimardani. 
she's originally from Iran, but currently uh, in uh, Tilburg University. And uh, I will point, if you are interested in this topic, I will point you to the to this direction of her research and the research of uh, people uh, around her team. Uh, there are a lot of breakthroughs that are coming in this area. Uh, technologies that are, uh, for, for example, uh, like how to store our knowledge in a computer system. So we theoretically, uh, basically our bodies can be uh, mechanical in past, but our consciousness can be stored and potentially we can become overcome aging process, overcome uh, like uh, dying, death itself. So uh, this is something that has a lot of potential how to basically analyze uh, uh, the decision making, how to store knowledge, how to store uh, consciousness itself. So this is this is a really like interesting topic and uh, I know it sounds uh, like sci-fi, but we are currently getting into the world of sci-fi, like Gilles Verne uh, in the past. It was all sci-fi at the time, but later uh, became our age, where nearly all of it became reality. And we are now getting into the next step of development, where even this kind of technology will be possible. So. I had the pleasure to uh, also interview her uh, for one media. So totally perfect, perfect activity. And it was supported by the ministry. So we basically had her and also other very important, uh, like uh, uh, from all around the world, researcher as for AI in one place, uh, in one of the top uh, universities as for uh, AI research uh, within Slovakia. So, and it was under IEEE, which is um, like industry standard in academia and a lot of international like organization that are connecting all the best people uh, or the smartest one in uh, this industry. Okay, so this is basically uh, the ending of uh, my talk. I'm already a few minutes uh, on top of that. Uh, this is a, a photo from one conference that I had the pleasure to be uh, with uh, Mare Grossa. Uh, I already mentioned him. He's founder of uh, Good AI, one of the leaders in developing uh, uh, like AGI. Uh, Marek is my friend. Uh, he was also at the beginning of this initiative uh, uh, of Slovak AI and so on and so on, which later like uh, evolved. And uh, we were there at uh, 2017 as absolutely first Slovaks on this level of conference, which is uh, globally one of the top events. Uh, it was in Berlin. Uh, within Europe, it's the biggest one. Uh, the Paideta Berlin, and uh, just imagine like uh, 500 or 700, I think, like more than 500 top people in AI industry and uh, in data science in one place in uh, one time. It was totally like blast. I was on the main stage, uh, like on the main day like Trent McConaughey, one of the leaders in uh, like blockchain and uh, Python uh, industry, one of the smartest people within this like AI world was giving me microphone. So I was after his excellent, uh, like uh, excellent speech, I was given microphone to basically continue. So you can imagine uh, how it uh, like uh, what it meant for me. So it was awesome, uh, awesome experience. Uh, if you are interested in this old talk, I I always uh, like return to this uh, like quote or this uh, this um, uh, these words. Uh, basically, I still see it the same way as I see I have seen it in two thousand and seventeen. 
uh, don't be afraid of the future. The uh, future will be really awesome if we do it well. Uh, all It's up to us now to like build it, to build it better. To We have all the technologies from which is like results of all the top people in industry. We are building basically these models and these technologies on the giants, on totally geniuses that in past like uh, contributed in this area. We have to do it the smart way. We have to like build it uh, on our own uh, like uh, value system, on our own um, uh, like uh, views based on implementation the best as we can and to do it uh, the best way possible. But uh, the main one, and it was also topic of my talk, we have to have in mind the social good, the basically the good of all of us, our societies and our, uh, our uh, like uh, uh, economies slash uh, societies slash continents for basically for benefit of everybody. So this is still the best message or the most optimistic message that I can give you. Yes, there are a lot of risk. Yes, there are a lot of problems, but we can deal with that. And hopefully there is enough uh, like uh, people who view with the same. This is more about uh, us our, and our activities. Uh, these are the conferences that we cooperated with. Here you have for this year, Web Expo Machine Learning Prague. You can even get discount if you are interested in topics, including this AI. Uh, you can also attend uh, meetups like this AI radio, but also we have PyData, uh, Tableau community and so on and so on. Uh, this is more about us, uh, our research institute, the DAI Creative Get Data Institute. We are from day one, uh, the totally like uh, have transparent account and transparent uh, financing. If you want to support us, you can do so. This link is important, uh, which is the slides. So these slides uh, that uh, uh, you are seeing now uh, is available uh, here at tiny URL slides uh, XAI. You can download it, you can comment it, and so on and so on. It will be also available at uh, my GitHub, so for you to download. And uh, this is contact also. Uh, as for me, this is the main, uh, like AI Slovakia mail, get data mail, my private mail. And this is the student mail uh, at Tuka Technical University. Of course, it's here also. If you want, if you prefer WhatsApp and so on, so on, these two numbers, you can reach me, GitHub, and so on and so on. So that's it. And uh, thank you for your uh, attention. And at the, at the end, you can also rate my talk. So feel free also to ask any question and uh, basically give me feedback. Then is uh, the like top one, five is like average, and one is the lowest uh, rating. But if you didn't like it, also vote. Hope I have not like <laughs> exhausted you. We have seventeen people here. Four already like voted. Five. So let's do ten. At least half of you. They can vote. It would be nice to have a feedback. Six. Okay. 
Recognize Rich Seven. Nine is good. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, we already had half of the vote, so we will move on. So thank you for the rating. Uh, it's nice feedback. Uh, Nine point one is uh, pretty great. Uh, out of ten, it's pretty nice. Uh, uh, like ninety percent uh, <laughs> uh, rate of the model. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, so one more thing. Uh, what I would like to also mention at the end of my talk is also one big thank you. Uh, at uh, like last year, at the end of last year, I had the opportunity to attend uh, one awesome event. Uh, I was basically leading the uh, the mission of uh, uh, the AI researchers from all around uh, uh, Slovakia into University of Cambridge. For those of you who don't know, um, Alan Turing studied here. Uh, Stephen Hawking studied here. Uh, Alan Turing on different college. We, we were at Peterson. Uh, he was at uh, King's College, I believe. Uh, he was studying math there. But uh, this was basically the Peterson College was uh, and is still the oldest college uh, within Cambridge. And also this uh, like um, conference that I was able to attend and leading the team of researchers uh, there, the Slovak mission of researchers there is one of the oldest, if not the oldest within like uh, uh, England. So it was pretty great opportunity. And I was also like to be so close into that like cradle of uh, uh, computer science. I was finishing at that time uh, first draft of my uh, first academic paper. So uh, it was a very special experience for me. So I would like to thank you. Uh, also, uh, my colleagues, uh, Viera Bordoy, who is uh, executive director uh, at uh, AS Slovakia, and uh, Nikola Dobrovska, my other colleague, uh, who is assistant of uh, uh, the executive director, uh, they uh, they were supporting us from uh, Bratislava. So, uh, yeah, so thank you, big thank you. And also thanks uh, to the Ministry of uh, uh, Investment, uh, Regional Development and uh, Informatizations for supporting this mission. It was within the action plan that I already mentioned. So it was financed by uh, Ministry or by uh, Slovak government that case so it was awesome experience and we still are getting uh, pretty great feedback as for that it helped uh, our researchers uh, to basically connect with uh, like completely different scientific uh, world and uh, completely to be in the cradle of computer science in ai where alan turing was uh, working like a uh, few <laughs> a uh, few tens uh, of meters uh, from there and uh, like few meters from there uh, Stephen Hawking was crossing the road uh, in past and living with her first wife it was uh, awesome so uh, uh, that's it and, and uh, also this is us this is the mission and uh, basically on one picture you see uh, like combination of best uh, researchers from Žilina which is another uh, outside Bratislava and Košice this is one of the top places for studying AI and uh, the Academy of Science uh, Ministry uh, Jana Novohradská from Miri uh, or Mirdi uh, uh, is there she's also the author of the photo and uh, yeah, it was awesome. And uh, thank you for that. And hopefully ministry uh, will support this kind of mission that at least we academics uh, see very important also in the in the future. I was representing their uh, category of uh, cybernetics and uh, artificial intelligence at the faculty of uh, electrical engineering and informatics uh, 
at uh, Technical University Košice, where I study and teach. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And this is uh, another, uh, like, uh, uh, one point or the last thing, one more thing that I would like to mention. Uh, like uh, February, like one of the Valentines that I got recently was uh, from organizer of this event. So it's basically invitation letter uh, to one of the top events uh, within like AI. Uh, it will be in Dubai in uh, uh, later this year in April. Uh, I will see whether I will come, whether we will have budget as for that. But to close uh, with this slide, I would like to mention the Sophia that I mentioned at the beginning, uh, when Ben was creating first humanoid uh, robot, basically the Sophia will be the main speaker or the um, uh, the ambassador, official AI ambassador of this conference, basically 10,000 attendees, top companies all around the world, the leaders, uh, one place, one time, Dubai, uh, the uh, basically United Arab Emirates are one of the top leaders within AI, uh, AI industry and basically attracting the top AI talents globally. Within Europe, only Germany is able to compete with uh, attractive uh, like uh, uh, attractive wages, attractive uh, uh, conditions as for uh, attracting the best talents. So uh, it will be the center of AI, the best place uh, to be. And uh, yeah, so if you are considering uh, visiting Dubai, definitely have this conference in your like view. And maybe we will see each other there. Let's see. And at least the Sophia would like to meet uh, her, the first humanoid or the first uh, creation of uh, something physical, uh, evolvement of artificial intelligence. She will be there also. Uh, okay, and this is open uh, area for any questions that you might ask. So feel free uh, to ask. Uh, 